and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about some of those common QGIS user interface issues that I as a teacher meet again and again when teaching the use of QGIS. So as a new as a new user of QGIS, the first many times you use a software, you will probably get a wee bit frustrated by strange things happening and sometimes those strange things have really simple explanations. So let's look at some of those common issues. First of all, if you as I have a non-English setup on your computer, when you start QGIS, it will start in your native language. So in my case, it starts in Danish. Um, so you'll probably want to change the user interface of your program. There's some elements in the user interface called panels that you might want to move around. Um, sometimes you accidentally close them. How do you get them back? We are talking about clearing out selections of the yellow stuff that suddenly turns up on your screen. How do you get rid of that? Um, working with the I2, so information tool or identify tool, which sometimes leaves some strange red things on your monitor. We also talk about them. Then probably one of the most annoying things in QGIS is that there are really many almost identical tools, but only almost. So if I tell you to use a raster calculator, that is no less than four different raster calculators that all are called raster calculator and all appear by clicking something that is called raster calculator. But you just have to learn to find which one I mean. And that I have, personally, I have some approaches that should make it unique in my videos. But let's see. And then sometimes QGIS test behaves peculiar and you can't get it back. So I'll just say how to reset the user interface back to how it was at installation. So let's dive into how all of this looks in QGIS. So in QGIS, here we have my uh, half of it. I think there's room enough for this. So now it's in Danish, um, which is because of, it's my language of the computer. So the thing to do is to get this interface to turn into English, you go into settings or Instillinger, as it's called in Danish, and go into Instillinger, which is called options here in English. And up in the general part, which is called General in Danish, you go and say, all right, system local. Why that's not in Danish, I don't know, but you choose that. And then you choose your language that you want to QGIS to use as its interface language. So I want it to be in English. You can also change the number format. So in Danish, we use a comma, hyphen, uh, or, or sorry, comma, um, and not the dot. So um, so be aware that um, that different languages has different number formats. In general, it works, but some if there's a tool that breaks on strange numbers, you can change the number format to an English number format with a dot as a decimal break, and then that will um, probably work better. So that's the settings of um, the user interface. You'll say, OK, nothing happens until you restart QGIS. So I'll just do that. So back in QGIS, we now have an English user interface. And we can talk about this thing about panels. So panels are these windows that we have in the main interface here. So this is a panel. Panels can be dragged. So you take the uh, title of it, so layer in this case. I can drag it along and I can place it. If I put, go close to the end edge, it, I can dock it as it's called. So now it's located fixed there. I can have it as a floating, which now it's floating, you can float around, be whatever. 
or you can even move it outside um, your main app. So if you have more than one monitor, you can put some of your panels on your other monitors. Can't see it in my case because I'm only recording that one monitor. I bring it back. When I bring it back, I can also choose to bring it back to where it came from. So I can, if I have at the bottom here, you can see that it has now made a blue space underneath my browser panel. So it dock it there. I can have it on top of my browser panel. Or if I move it to the middle, you can see that my whole Docker panel is blue. If I now let go, what will happen is that it becomes a docked tabbed panel. So now I can tab at the bottom here between my two panels. So I, if there are panels you don't use at the same time, it's a really good idea to have them tabbed because then they will only take up one panel space. So think about how you work. And if you have panels that you're not using at the same time, make sure that they are tabbed underneath each other. If you want to bring them out of the tab, you can't just bring, take the tide because that will bring the whole group of panels out and you can dock them somewhere. So what you have to do is that if you want to split up a dock, you have to take the title in the tabs and then drag that out. And then you can dock them. So now I have browser in one side and my layers in another side. Another thing that often happens is that you close them because you want the real estate and then you can't get them back. There's a shortcut for these things. Um, and in general, I don't like teaching the shortcuts. You can find them. And if you use them a lot, you'll learn them. Generally, I try to keep it simple without using too many shortcuts. So I'll use the menu. So view, and then you can go to panels. And then you can see you have your layer panel. And I can also go and take my view panels and take my browser panel back. So now I've got my panels back. One shortcut you should be aware about, that is um, that shortcut I just used. It's control tab on the windows. I can't remember what it was on the Mac. Um, basically it toggles panel visibility. And that's often what happens when Students say, hey, my panels disappeared. And it's probably because they were trying to change another program or something like it. And they pressed control tab and their panels disappeared. Again, there you can get, you can of course use control tab to get it back. But in general, try as a beginner at least to stick to the menu systems. So in the view, you can go down and find the one that is called toggle panel visibility. And then you got it there. The full screen gets rid of the menu top here. So the other one that is down here, real estate is toggle full screen mode. And that basically just gets rid of some menu stuff up here, but uh, never mind that. Um, the, this part up here is the, all of these icons. That's what they're called toolbars. So in your view, you have these, your panels and you have your true bars. So here you can turn off the individual uh, toolbar. So this is the help. If you don't really need the help because it's not that good, uh, you might go into toolbars and find the help again and then toggle that off. And then you'll have that, you get a bit more real estate. Um, so. Different ways of toggling your panels and your toolbars and getting them back again if you have closed them. I'll just bring my setting back to how I normally have it. Um, I have a project that I've been working on another video, um, which is um, old demo. Um, just because I need some data. So, bring me some data. 
so I'm, and I'm now in my layer panel yeah, so I can see my layer. There are um, many times we use the selection tool. So if something is selected in QGIS, it's yellow. And um, you have to be really careful about that, that this tool exists because if something is yellow, and you and you do something typically save run a tool it will only influence the selected elements so most tools are designed to only operate on the selected elements so be careful with having anything selected so this button here which you know you could be afraid of because probably something like deleting them or something but that's clears the selection so a good idea to make it a habit before doing anything make sure that you don't have anything selected by clicking that too because then that you will save yourself a lot of trouble and annoyance um so and that's another video on using the selection tool in general. This is just a warning about some of the side effects of the selection tool and how you use it and how to get rid of those side effects. Um, another tool which is also really useful and sometimes annoying is the I tool. So at the moment, if I click here, it will put a red frame around it. I don't know why it sometimes fills them in red and sometimes has this to the outline probably some i don't know um anyway that's that's fine and it basically it only affects a selected layer so you can see here at the moment if my layer here is active i can't even see that i have to do like that now you can see it's blue that means that is active it becomes gray when you're not in that um, panel, but you can see it has this gray line. If I now want to know something about this town here and click there, it will go for the whole country because the tool has different modes of working. As you can see, this says on here mode. At the moment, it has current layer, so that's the layer that is selected. So if I wanted to know something about town i had to make sure that my populated places and then i could query the town um this is uh, really peculiar sometimes is that if you have your layer turned off like this so you have a layer that you're not really using and you then suddenly click with your eye tool and then you get a red marking so even though a layer is off and you use a high tool, it will display. And uh, and that is sometimes confusing. And um, and sometimes it can be difficult to get rid of these, depending on if you zoom the far on in. So whatever I do, I still have this selection. Um, or this I tool. The only way to get rid of this is if you can find somewhere where there's no object, you can click there. Or you can in this identifier panel. This with a little red one on again will clear your identifier object. So um, it's a bit, that's sometimes difficult to find, but it is in there if you want to get rid of it. So be aware that the identifier tool will select or display identify features from layers that are not displayed. Uh, but that is just because that's the default setting of it. I often um, choose to have this in let me turn on here. So change the default setting on my identifier to top down. That means that um, if I select something, it will it will select it even and if I, even though it layers not selected. I click it will select that one um, and it will also select um, objects if they are found 
And furthermore, if a layer is not on, it does not select in that layer. So personally, I always, not always, but I often change my identifier tools mode to top down to avoid some of those peculiar things that are in the current layer. The current layer gives you a bit more control, but it's sometimes just a bit more confusing than useful. So that was using the eye tool. Um, another thing that really confuses people is that there are a lot of different tools that are almost identical. One of the first ones you might meet is that if you want to change the styling of a layer, and then you can go directly up here and use the shortcut here, style layer, and you'll get a panel. Now I get, get rid of that one, I get a bit more real estate. So this is the styling layer panel. If I right click my layer, which I would normally do, this one is nice because it has what we call a live preview. So you can see you're changing changes as you go along. So if you change something to a hatch, it will become hatched. The other possibility for doing this is that if you go and say, click on the layer properties and then choose styling, this menu might look the same, but it's not. So this dialog box has not got a live preview. You have to say apply. Um, but then it has this style thing, thing where we can save our styles as files and things like that, which is not available in this one. So be aware that really, really many tools exist in different variants, especially when we start using some of the more advanced things. My favorite example of this is a raster calculator. So QGIS has not less than four different versions of a raster calculator. There is one which if you go into your raster menu and choose calculator, then there is one which the one I would normally use is if I went into my processing window, toolbar, raster, calculator, which is this one, which almost looks the same, but as I think I now can take, and I bring this one up now. So now you can see the differences. So this one doesn't have a lot of the settings that are in the one from the tools. And to make confusion complete, there is one shortcut that I tend to notice that my students really quickly pick up. That is this little corner down here. If you uh, click in that window and start typing master calculator, there are furthermore um, three raster calculators here. One of them is the one that we saw before, which is that one. And those two are two additional raster calculators. So if you use this to be aware that you have, you know which tool you get hold, so you use this search down here, you get hold of which the tool you want. Almost always in my demos, I will be using the tools from the processing and then the tools up here. Now, that's a relatively easy thing to see. The final thing I would like to talk about is how you reset QGIS. So sometimes QGIS just gets stuck. Um, typically what happens is that you can't access the processing menu um and you try and reinstall QGIS and it doesn't help. That's because that when you reinstall QGIS it will retain the settings from the previous you have to go up and say in your settings you have this one which is called your user profiles and here normally you just have default 
if you say open the location, the location where the user profiles are stored on your computer will open in your file manager of that computer. So you want to clear everything, get it back to your original. What you could do is that you can go to profiles and I just delete that one because that's the one I normally do. And then you take the one that is broken and then I'll rename it. So if I um, close QGIS, because you can't do it while QGIS is open, discard, and take this thing here and rename it. This say copy and paste. Um, and let's call it old. So now I've got two, and I'll just delete that one. I could have renamed it from the beginning, but I did it the long way around. So now it's um, there. If I start QGIS now, it will bring me back to a clean start. You can see it has already created a default folder. Um, so I have a clean start. It will be back in Danish in my case. So it's back in Danish and any, any settings that I've done to use of interface is gone. But that also means that if I've done a lot of changes and just need to get something so, so I can do whatever I want to do, but still want to be able to access some of the changes I've made, typically installed plugins and can't remember exactly what I did, then you now can go to your settings and your user profile, and then you can change it to old. And in my case, I should now have one that was set up as I did before in English with my panels rearranged and all of those things. So here's my English version of QGIS with the user profile old. And you can see my panels have been rearranged. My language has been changed. And here is my default. So you can always simply reset by um, going in in your user profile. So if I to do it in the English version, user profile, open profile location, and then the one step up. So you've got an overview of each profile you have. And then the default one, you can that's the one it starts with when the program starts. You can just rename it, delete it, and then you can get back into a clean as was when it was installed so um hope you like this uh, basic walkthrough of some of those really common issues that is with um, QGIS there are many more um, but these are just those that are typical for your first days weeks with QGIS where you say oh this is really why is it behaving like it is so hope you like the video hope to see you in another video bye